Welcome back. In this step then, we are now going to look at the sculpting tools for landscapes. And we've still got our landscape tool open from the last part. And you can see that we've got sculpt, erase, smooth, flatten, ramp, etc. And we'll have a look at what these do. So the first one, if I just make a viewport active, you can see that I've got this brush and it has a fall off and it has a size. And if I just click, you can see that it will sculpt my landscape and that will move it upwards. I'm just going to press Ctrl and Z to undo that. I can change the size of my brush with the brush size slider here. So I can make that much smaller. And I often like to work with a smaller brush because then you can sort of build up your details a little bit more carefully. So that's one way of doing it. But I'm going to undo that and just show you the way that I tend to use. And that's the square brackets on the keyboard. So if I hold the right square bracket, you can see that will make my brush bigger. And the left square bracket will make it smaller. We've also got brush fall off. And that's kind of how soft or hard the brush is. So if I take that fall off all the way down, that will make it a very hard brush. And you can see that I now get quite hard edges on any sculpting that I do. The opposite of that would be to have quite a high brush fall off. And that makes things very, very smooth. Again, that can be good or it can be less good. It depends on what you're going for. So I'll undo that as well. And I'm just going to put both those settings back to defaults by clicking on these little arrows just here. Okay, so that's the sculpting brush and that will just move your landscape up or down. However, if you hold shift whilst you left click, it will move it down like that. So you could create like a river or a lake or just like a valley, something that's indented. So you can go down or you can go up and that will be whether or not you're pressing shift on your keyboard. Okay, one other thing that I want to show you is that we've got these different types of brush here. So you can change the fall off type. I'm not going to bother with that today, uh, but you can change the brush type. And you can do this one here, which will give you a textured brush. Now, it starts with this default checker pattern, which at first glance doesn't look like it's going to be very useful. However, I have actually get quite a lot of use out of this. So what I was doing a second ago was sculpting and everything was quite smooth. However, if I now just keep clicking and dragging with this, you can see that I get something that's a lot more jagged and that's because the brush is doing something different and that can be a really useful thing with that so let me just undo that so that's the alpha or texture brush you've also got this one here which is the pattern brush and you can see this is working with the same checker pattern at the moment but this would like keep that pattern in there so you could then load something in like a mounting alpha or something like that and that would give you control over that and then the last one is work with entire landscape components. And what this can do is just sculpt up entire components. You can see this landscape's built of lots of squares. These are components and you can sculpt up the entire thing. It's not something I've ever used, but it's a tool that exists. Okay, the next tool along is this erase tool. And that does exactly what you expect. It erases it. Now, if you imagine that your landscape is actually made up of a black and white image, this is called a height map. And that's what landscapes are based on. By default, as I'm looking at this landscape now, it's all black as far as Unreal Engine is concerned. When I start painting somewhere like that, let's just put the um, normal brush back on. That's actually painting with either white or various shades of gray. When I use the erase tool, what that does is just paints it back to black again. And you can do that at any time. So if I now just uh, sculpt something else, so I'll put something with a bit of texture in there like that and you see that's got kind of a jagged texture going on and if I use the smooth tool this will smooth out all that detail sometimes you want that sometimes you don't but that's what the tool does there's also the flatten tool and we'll get some good use out of this in a bit and what that does is anywhere that you click at so I'm about halfway up this little hill that I've created there if I click and drag it will flatten it out to that level and you can create like raised platforms so that's pretty cool next one along is the ramp tool and that's pretty cool. You click somewhere, you click somewhere else, you can raise it up, you can make it wider if you want. And then when you're done, you press add ramp and you get a ramp. So there you can see that's a ramp. And next up, we've got one of my favorites, which is the erosion tool. And what this does is kind of makes it look like sand dunes. I think they call it thermal erosion. They do. And it just makes everything look a bit more natural. Now, we're not going to be using this in our level because it won't give us the effect we want. But if you were doing like a sweeping landscape, this is a really cool one to use. Uh, the next one is hydro erosion. This simulates erosion that's happened by like water going over your landscape for over millennia. I 
can't get on with it. I don't like it, but it's there. You should experiment with it. There's the noise brush. What this does is just adds noise. So it'll move things up and down. It just stops things being flat. So that's what that one does. And then for this exercise, I'm not going to bother going over any of the others. We just need to have a, an understanding of those ones across the top. So what I'll do now is just erase all of the work I've done there because that was just to show you how the brushes worked. And that will wrap it up for this step. In the next step, we're going to use some of these brushes to sculpt our landscape. So I'll see you there for that. Thanks for watching and supporting the channel. If you'd like to help me create more content like this, please consider becoming a patron on Patreon. The contributions I get through Patreon make a huge difference in keeping this channel going. Remember to like, comment and subscribe to make sure you don't miss my upcoming tutorials. Your support and engagement mean the world to me and help my channel continue to grow. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.